Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy, also known as ETCG1 when I post videos on this channel. If it is your birthday, happy birthday, you've waited so long, congratulations. Well, I'm sure you're all very excited about the thumbnail for this video. and as to why that happened. And I plan to cover that in this video, but I wanna put this in context for you first. Yes, just hang on, we'll get there. It is the week of, well, let's see, today is March 6, 2018. All of this is coming from, I finished the Fairmont and I'm driving it. In fact, uh, last weekend, I took it on a 90 mile test drive. It worked flawlessly. And that is the first time I've really taken the car out, didn't have any issues. Uh, I didn't even bring any tools, which was probably a little bit foolish, but I felt confident. Here's the deal. The week that you see this video, so this video will be posted on a Monday, but this week, uh, the reason why I'm under the gun to get the Fairmont finished is I am headed down to Georgia for the Caffeine and Octane on the Beach, which is an event that I attended last year. And in a way, this is the debut of the Fairmont. So if you are going to be around that weekend and it's the weekend of the 15th of March, it's St. Patrick's Day weekend, 2018, uh, to Jekyll Island, Georgia. I'll post a link to that in the description. If you're around, come out to the car show. I will be in the metal rescue booth and it's an 11 hour drive each way. So you can understand why I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit under pressure to get the car ready to go. Well. Up until last week, the car was pretty much ready to go with a few issues, and one of the main issues being the fuel system. And the fuel system is what I was working on uh, when everything happened. Well, first of all, my friends at Holly really hooked me up. They hooked me up with a new fuel pump. They also hooked me up with a new fuel pressure regulator, which were two things I needed because the direction that I was going with the fuel system from what I had, the old system was a deadhead system using a Holly Blue fuel pump. That wasn't working out so well. I wasn't getting consistent fuel pressure. I wasn't getting consistent fuel delivery. And especially when I'd really get on the car, it was going lean. It just Everything about it wasn't acting right to me. My number one suspect was the fuel system and I should have listened to a lot of people out there who kept saying on social media, uh, Eric, you gotta put a return system in it, even though it's a carburetor. And I'm like, yeah, I can just deadhead it. They were right, I was wrong. And I've proven that because I've now since installed that system, but it didn't go without issue. I was able to install a return line going back to the uh, fuel tank and uh, I had always had provisions for return going to the fuel tank anyway because I thought, well, one day I might want to go to fuel injection so while I'm having the fuel cell made, I'll have a port for a return. Well, up to that point, I had it capped off. Well, now it's time to use it. So I ran a return line going back, I ran a new supply line and the way I've, I've run the system is I've set it up to where it goes to the carburetor first from the fuel pump. So it goes, it goes from the tank through a filter into the fuel pump to another filter, a finer filter, and then up to the engine. And then when it gets to the engine, it goes to the fuel log on the carburetor, goes through that fuel log, loops back around, and then goes to the fuel pressure regulator. The fuel pressure regular is a regulator is a return style regulator. So in other words, it has a fuel line return, which connects to that return line that I ran going back to the fuel tank. And all that worked out great. You know, honestly, my line bending could use some work, I know, but hey, you know, it's, this is my first build and my first time really bending lines like that. And if you've ever bent 3.8 stainless steel line, you would say that I did a pretty good job, I would wager. Here's what happened. I get the system all put together and I want to test it for leaks before I fire it up because I don't want to have any fires or anything. All I did was turn the fuel pump on. I didn't start the engine, didn't anything, just turn the fuel pump on and turn the fuel on and, and just listened and looked around the system for any leaks that might be there. It's quieter. A lot quieter. Like, when the engine's running, I'm not gonna hear it quieter. Not seeing any leaks. Oh yeah, I like how quiet that is. I mean, you can hear it, but you can't hear it.
Well, I listened and I looked and I, I didn't have it on for that long and I didn't see any leaks or anything. You know, it was, it was actually fine. And I'm like, yeah, this is way cool. We can start it up. Well, I went to start it up and it locked. Whoa, <laughs> that sucks. That's locked up. Like the engine just turned over and went pfft, like it's full of liquid. And I'm like, oh crap. So what I ended up doing was taking off the carburetor hat and all that stuff. I ended up taking out all the spark plugs. I cranked the engine over, which squirted a bunch of gas out. And as I suspected, somehow a lot of gas got down inside the engine. That is not good. That kind of thing can bend connecting rods, but I was just cranking the engine. It wasn't cranking fast. Everything was okay. Like I said, I, I took the plugs out, cranked it over, left the plugs out in the engine to dry overnight. I came back the next day, I put everything back together. When I went to try to start it, uh, fuel pressure was not right. In fact, fuel pressure seemed way fricking high and I couldn't quite figure it out. Well, the fuel pressure regulator that I'm running, linked in the description, is capable of working with both a carbureted system and a fuel injected system. I'm, I'm future proofing the car for fuel injection. A lot of you may be very happy about that. Others may be going, I told you so, Eric, you're doing it wrong. Fine, I'm doing it wrong. So the carbureted system, it's set up for four to 15 PSI. On the fuel injected system, it's set up for 16 to 63 PSI, I think it is. The way you do this is you change the spring, which counteracts the volume of fuel coming into the fuel pressure regulator and thus creating pressure. We've talked about this before with oil pressure. Oil pressure is not necessarily created by an oil pump the same way a fuel pressure is not created by the fuel pump, it's created by the restriction in the system, which in this case is the fuel pressure regulator. There are two springs that come with my fuel pressure regulator. It says in the instructions that it ships with the carbureted spring, which is a lighter spring. Well, it came to find out that they actually had installed the fuel injection spring. So in other words, I was running massive fuel and fuel pressure through my system. So much so that it overcame my float seats, filled up my float bowls, and not just filled up my carburetor and went down inside the engine, but apparently it also filled up enough fuel to go through that carburetor hat and down into the intercooler. Like, so the intercooler is now full of fuel. As I'm trying to get the thing started, as I'm figuring this all this out, I had a backfire through the carburetor. And when I rev the engine, the turbo compressor, also did its job, but instead of being able to push air through the intercooler, since remember I had the carburetor hat and everything off, it pushed that fuel right out that hole. When it pushed the fuel out that hole, there was an ignition source either at the carburetor, as you can see in the video, or uh, the hot exhaust header, something like that, caught fire. And you can see, as I rev the engine, a bunch of fuel comes out that tube. <laughs> that's raw gasoline, and that's what caught on fire. Now, thankfully, I had the fire extinguisher in the car, and those of you that said that I'm never gonna be able to get to it in time, well, you were wrong, because I felt I got to it fairly quickly. There was no damage other than some soot, and other than using a fire extinguisher, which the dry chemical type leave a big, huge mess. But as I said in that short clip, I'd rather have a huge mess than an engine that's on fire. Before you even say it, it's already ordered. They do make fire extinguishers that do not use a dry chemical that also work as fire extinguishers, specifically for vehicles like this with nice pretty engines, which my engine isn't so nice and pretty anymore, but it's running and it's alive and that's important. So I will go back and clean this thing, uh, hopefully before I head down to Jekyll Island, but I've already ordered and have on its way a fire extinguisher that does not leave a chemical residue at all. And that's the next one going in the car. Special thanks to my friend Bleep and Jeep for the uh, release for the, uh, the fire extinguisher that I had because that made it so easy. I just pulled a pin, the oops pin. There are other tags he had to go with them. <laughs> but I pulled the oops pin, I got the fire extinguisher out, I got the fire out in time. Walked away for a bit, let all that stuff dissipate. Don't breathe in fire extinguisher stuff, it's not good for you. I drained the fuel out of the uh, intercooler and cleaned all that stuff out, put it all back together, and I was able to start it up also with the other lighter fuel uh, pressure spring. But now you know what happened. So those of you that were guessing, those of you that wanted to know, what happened was, is the incorrect fuel pressure spring was installed in my fuel pressure regulator. When I was testing the system, it completely filled everything with fuel. There was way too much pressure, overcame everything. And as a result, when I went to rev the engine or start it up, that's when the ignition source met a whole lot of gasoline underneath the hood and you have said fire. 
Uh, I'm just really grateful it didn't turn out worse, but I gotta tell you, after two years worth of work, to see your, your pride and joy, your, your vehicle on fire, that's not a good feeling. So any of you that have experienced that, I'm sorry you experienced it. I hope you had a fire extinguisher handy and you were able to handle it in the same way I was with minimal damage. Fire extinguishers are important. That's the story. So those of you that were waiting, now you know what happened. And now you know that I will also be at Jekyll Island on St. Patrick's Day weekend, 2018. If you want to see Oliver in person, come on out. I'd love to see you because Metal Rescue Booth. I'll put links in the description to additional videos, also a playlist on Oliver if you're not familiar with the car or the build. For now, thank you for watching. Uh, links in the description, as I mentioned. I'm also gonna put a link in the description to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you go if you have automotive questions. Are you sure that thing runs, Eric? I don't believe you. Well, how's this? Yes, it runs. Loud button. No loud button. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.